live NFL trivia every Wednesday night on Twitch at 9 p.m. Eastern. Come show off your football knowledge for a chance to win cash prizes. Check the link in the description to find out more. And now, on with our feature presentation. Terry Bradshaw is nothing short of a legend in Pittsburgh. The Hall of Fame quarterback was one of the players responsible for taking the Pittsburgh Steelers from the laughing stock of the league and from the team perennially at the cellar of the NFL and turning them into one of the greatest dynasties the sport has ever seen. But most of the accolades and praise where he was one of the main reasons why the team was winning games came in the second half of his career. Because the first half of his career, yeah, it was not that pretty. And Bradshaw's rookie season in particular was a bit of a mess that if it happened in today's NFL, would probably result in the Steelers abandoning ship after just one year. But of all the lowlights of his rookie season, there is one that stands out from the rest. Because in the middle of the season, he had just about the worst week possible. He was in Chuck Knoll's doghouse, getting fined not once but twice, took an absolute beating, got benched, and lost the game. This is the story behind the worst moment of Terry Bradshaw's poor rookie season. Before I talk about the actual week in question, we need some context to understand just how poorly Terry Bradshaw's season was going before this. And perhaps the best place to start is to go back to January 1970, when the Steelers made the draft pick that would change franchise history forever. In 1969, which was Chuck Knoll's first season in charge of the team, the Steelers were absolutely terrible. They went 1-13, finishing tied with the Chicago Bears for the worst record in the NFL. More on that later. While their defense was atrocious, allowing 404 points for the worst average in the league, their offense was not any better. They scored just 218 points all season, which was the second worst total in the league, and they were held to single digits in five of their 14 games. Pittsburgh had a ton of problems, with one being that they couldn't hold onto the ball. They threw a league-worst 29 interceptions, turned it over a league-worst 49 times, and had one game against the Cleveland Browns where they coughed it up eight times. Pittsburgh drafted quarterback Terry Henry in the second round that year, but the rookie was unimpressive in his action. In five starts, he went 0-5. He completed just over 41% of his passes. Of all the quarterbacks in football to throw at least 100 passes, he ranked dead last in completion percentage, and he had some abysmal starts in that stretch, including a game against the Chicago Bears where he went 1-6 for six with five yards passing and an interception, posting a pass rating of 0.0, .0 and a game against the Dallas Cowboys where he went 3 for 17 with 17 yards. And on the three sacks, and in that atrocity against the Cowboys, he averaged less than one yard per pass attempt. While the Steelers weren't necessarily going to give up on Hunt Ratty after one year, if they were in a position to improve, they were going to take advantage of it. One small problem. The Chicago Bears also finished 1-13, and back then, ties in the draft order were broken with a coin flip. The Bears called the toss, and in what felt like the first good thing to happen to the Steelers in forever, Pittsburgh won it. The Steelers got the number one pick, and used it to take Louisiana Tech quarterback Perry Bradshaw. Chuck Noll was thrilled with the pick, saying that Bradshaw was an extremely accurate dropback passer, and that he was the most valuable college player out there. While he emphasized that he wasn't giving up on Hanratty, he said that this was a pick necessary to build a championship squad. Noll believed that Bradshaw was going to be the guy to help turn things around, but at the start of the 1970 season, Let's just say it didn't quite work out that way. When opening day rolled around, the Steelers trotted the rookie out there. He had beaten out veterans Kent Nix and Dick Shiner and second-year player Terry Henratty for the starting spot, and he was going to take the reins as Pittsburgh entered a brand new era of football. It almost felt symbolic in a way, especially with the Steelers swapping conferences and joining the AFC as part of the merger agreement. Playing Terry Bradshaw was like reading a brand new chapter in a book. It was turning the page on an old era, and hopefully for Steeler fans, would be the start of something special. Alas, that was not the case. Because Bradshaw had about as bad of a start to his career on the field as possible. His very first game was a rude awakening to life in professional football. Because in his debut at home against the Houston Oilers, he went 4 for 16, completing 25% of his passes while throwing no touchdowns and one interception, and posting a pass rating of 19.3, which is worse than if he did nothing but spike the ball to the ground on every single play. He had a lot of those games below the 39.6 line, so I'll just leave it at that. The Steelers lost that game 19-7, and Bradshaw got benched midway through the third quarter. The following week against Denver, the Steelers would lose 16-13. Much like last time, Bradshaw would throw no touchdowns and one interception. He followed that up with another poor performance against the Cleveland Browns, where in a 15-7 loss, Bradshaw went 13-29 for with no touchdowns, three interceptions, seven sacks, and a pass rating of 29.6. The good news for Pittsburgh was that in their next two games with Bradshaw under center, they won. The bad news was that it had nothing really to do with Bradshaw at all. In Week 4 against the Bills, they won even though Bradshaw went 3-for-12 with 24 yards. And in Week 5, they won 7-3. to And even though Bradshaw threw the first touchdown pass of his career in this one, he completed less than 50% of his passes, threw three picks, 
and took three sacks. To say that Bradshaw was having a rough start to his career would be a massive understatement, but entering week six, it was about to get a whole lot worse, because the week that followed turned out to be one of the worst moments of Terry Bradshaw's career. Terry Bradshaw had a somewhat strange agreement with the Steelers and head coach Chuck Noll. Anytime the Steelers played a road game, Bradshaw got permission to not fly back with the team, and instead fly to visit his family down in Shreveport. Remember that Bradshaw was born in Louisiana, went to high school in Louisiana, and played college football in Louisiana. This experience with the Steelers was really the first time in his career that he was truly outside of the state for an extended period of time, and Pittsburgh wanted to do everything in their power to accommodate their rookie quarterback. However, Bradshaw was on thin ice with Pittsburgh after the game against the Oilers, since he was late for a team meeting in Houston due to hanging out with his friends and family that night. Bradshaw was fined for that incident. And now he was about to be fined again. Because as it turned out, Bradshaw couldn't get a flight back from Shreveport to Pittsburgh because it was too foggy. This meant that he missed an entire day of practice. When the starting quarterback, who isn't exactly very good in the first place, is missing practice prior to a game against one of the better teams in football in the Oakland Raiders, that would be enough to drive any head coach up the wall. And Chuck Knoll was no exception to the rule. Knoll was fuming and publicly criticized his quarterbacks in the press. He said that Bradshaw had no excuse for missing practice and when asked about his feelings on the whole incident, said, I'm very upset. Reports indicate that Bradshaw was fined a substantial amount and was fined way more than what he was fined for being late to the team meeting a few days before. Normally, Noel kept these sorts of punishments in-house, but he made an exception with Bradshaw. Getting fined twice to start off your week for two separate infractions is pretty bad, especially when you're already on sort of a rocky ground with everyone because of how poor your play has been. But if losing money wasn't bad enough, Oh, this week was about to get a whole lot worse. October 25th, 1970. It's week six of the NFL season, and we've got a critical matchup on our hands between the Oakland Raiders and the Pittsburgh Steelers. This is the first time these two teams ever met, and while no one knew it at the time, this would eventually become one of the biggest rivalries in the NFL, where the two teams would hit each other for the better part of the 1970s. And this is a pretty big game for both teams. Both the Denver Broncos atop the AFC West and the Miami Dolphins in the wildcard spot have four wins while the Raiders enter this one with two. If they don't win this one, they're in serious danger of slipping out of playoff contention. As for the Steelers, even though they're 2-3, and three, the AFC Central isn't great, with the Cleveland Browns leading the way at 3-2. and two. A win here by the Steelers could give them a share of the division lead near the halfway point. But the story going into this one was how well Terry Bradshaw would play in the wake of being publicly criticized by his head coach for being late to one meeting and for missing another practice entirely. How would the rookie step up and perform? Well, he wouldn't because this was an atrocious game for Bradshaw and company. Bradshaw went 12 for 27, throwing for only 138 yards. He threw four interceptions, which was a career high at the time. He took five sacks for 44 yards, meaning that he finished the game with 94 net passing yards. That means he averaged less than three net yards per pass attempt. For some perspective, the worst total in the league that season was held by the Boston Patriots at 3.7 net yards per attempt, and they were abysmal. They were the only team below 4.5, with the league average being 5.5. And Terry Bradshaw in this game was at 2.9. Obviously, that's not going to get it done. He got pulled midway through the game, and his final stat line netted him a passer rating of just 33.2, as the Steelers lost the game 31-14. But it gets worse, because I looked at every game in Bradshaw's long and storied career where he threw at least four interceptions and took at least five sacks. Bradshaw played in 185 games over his career, including the postseason, and this was one of just two games where he was this bad. The only other one was a 17-6 loss in 1976 to the Minnesota Vikings. While I wouldn't call it the worst game of his career, as that title has to go to his 1982 performance more than a decade later against the Bills, which you can learn more about by clicking the card in the upper right corner, this one against the Raiders was definitely up there. It capped off what was already an awful week. After the game, Bradshaw was definitely feeling the effects of being rattled around by Oakland's defensive line. As he said, my head's killing me. They got a couple of good shots at me. And unfortunately for Bradshaw, his rookie season would continue to stink after that. He was benched one week later in favor of Terry Henratty and would finish the season with a completion percentage of 38%, six touchdowns, 24 interceptions, and a passer rating of 30.4. His 24 interceptions turned out to be the worst total in the entire league. And keep in mind that this was a quarterback who only started eight out of the possible 14 games. That's when you know it's going to be a rough one. Fortunately, we know that some quarterbacks just take a bit longer than others to get going, and the Steelers were incredibly patient with Bradshaw in hopes that their gamble would pay off. And obviously, it did. Bradshaw wound up playing in Pittsburgh until 1983, made three Pro Bowls, led the league in touchdown passes twice, 
won four Super Bowls in six years, was named MVP of the Super Bowl twice, and was named the first team All-Pro in 1978, as well as the MVP of the league. And today, Bradshaw is in the Pro Football Hall of Fame, forever enshrined in canon. His rookie season, at least in the long run, was not at all a side of things to come for the rest of his career. Still, even though it all worked out in the end, there was a period as a rookie where things were looking dicey, especially after what had to be one of the worst weeks, if not the worst week, of his entire career. He got fined twice. He got publicly criticized by his coach. He lost the game. He took a beating to the point where he was feeling what seemed like the lingering effects of a concussion afterwards, and he threw a career high in interceptions. And he did this all in the span of seven days. It is tough to do much worse than that, because in October 1970, Terry Bradshaw had the true definition of a horrible, no good, very bad week. Get your official Jaguar Gamer 9 merchandise by going to jg9shop.com, and be sure to like this video, ring the notification bell, subscribe down below if you haven't already, as it helps the channel out a lot, and be sure to check out Twitch every Wednesday night at 9pm Eastern for your chance to play NFL Trivia and win cash prizes, link in the description below. If you want to see videos like this condensed down to 60 seconds, then follow me on TikTok at jaguar9, and subscribe to 60 Second NFL History on YouTube. To see highlight videos of players throughout the history of the NFL, subscribe to JG9 Highlights. Also, special thanks to all of our Patreon supporters for helping with the channel. Your support is greatly appreciated. See how you can become a patron and request future video topics in the description below.